Hi there again. I wanted to show you something. Can you see this? This is me and number one when we was on the evangelistic field. And I want to tell you about when we went to Oklahoma. We was pulling a fifth wheel, and maybe I mentioned it before, and in a rainstorm, it jackknifed. So we had to spend two or three weeks there. So we had to get our cats and dogs off of the camper that we had wrecked. And he it was pullable, so we pulled it to this church. And we stayed for about three weeks. And they let us use their phone so that we could try to locate another one. And so we slipped. We pulled a, they pulled a mattress out for us in the kitchen of the church, which was very nice of them. And so we could sleep on that mattress. And I was young enough then that I could get up and down easier. Of course, the turmeric helps me. You know, I take turmeric and it works. Turmeric works, kiddos. So anyway, there's my pearls. I'm just feeling good today and I'm just having fun. So I'm just going to do another little video here. I hope, I hope you like it okay. If you don't, then that's sad, Dad. I do the best I can with what I got, as I always say. And my cat's right here by me. Come on, Bella, show them who you are. Look, she's right here. See, sleeping with Mommy. She's being a good girl. Anyway, so we just threw, they just threw that mattress down there for us, and, and tornadoes was everywhere around. In Oklahoma, we was there the wrong time of the year. So we slept on that. We got our cat. We, had, we traveled with a cat. And that cat was something else. She would come out of the trailer and go wherever she wanted to go. One ho one day, I got in the trailer, and she met me at the trailer door, and she had a snake about this long. She had bought us a present. We had to get rid of that snake, so we had it got away from her, of course, and there it was in the trailer. What are we going to do? We get a broom. I had to carry a broom. We got a broom till we chased that thing and flipped it outside. But anyhow, we slept on that mattress there in Oklahoma City, Frederick, Oklahoma. And they said, well, do you sleep good? And yes. They said, well, you know, this is our new church. I said, really, your new church? They said, yes, it, yes, it is. The other one was taken away by a tornado 10 years ago, and we built a new one. I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> we slept where a tornado destroyed the church. What if it came and destroyed that one? Well, like I have good news, it didn't. So anyway, <laughs> I've just had so many fond memories of Oklahoma. Uh, when we traveled out there, the people were just great. I tell you what, they are great, and they take care of you. You know what's really nice of being on the evangelistic field is the pastor and his wife every Sunday take you out for dinner, or else they have a big dinner. But you know, it in a way, I mean, the only person you really know is the pastor and his wife and your husband. And so you're alone in a crowd. And we would get up every morning and travel because everything was far apart in Oklahoma. And we'd go into town and go to McDonald's for breakfast. And I still like to go to McDonald's, not for breakfast, for their coffee, senior, senior coffees. Mm-hmm, take advantage of that. And we do every morning. You know, I thought, what? You don't look too bad. I thought I'd buy a special light to do these little videos. They didn't work, but I found a little thing I'd prop my iPad on that I don't have to hold it, and I just use natural light, and it works great. I like it. I'm going to have to tell you all about when we went to the West Indies. We went to the West Indies for three weeks one time. We was up in Pennsylvania, and this little girl, this soldier had married a girl from St. Vincent in the West Indies, and she said, you got to go to our home church. So, we said, whatever. So, she wrote her pastor, and we got an invite to the biggest church in St. Vincent in the West Indies. And we went. It, they run about 2,000. And we took our buddy's cassettes. Oh, he was a good singer. And he had several cassettes. And we took his cassettes, and we flew over there. It takes four hours to get there. And they showed us all around, and they treated us like a king and queen. And when before we was leaving, I was praying about it. And I said, Lord, you know, I got to stay cool. I just, if I don't have a fan, I'm not happy. I got to have a fan blowing in the room where I'm at. And I just almost put one in my suitcase. I had a small little fan. And something said, trust me. 
you are you really trusting i said i'm sorry lord i know you'll take care of it so we got to the west indies and they showed us to our room because they put you up and feed you and take care of you and do you know what there was the biggest fan right there in that bedroom where we slept i said i'm sorry lord that i did not trust but that fan did the job and uh, this rich couple went with us called the browns mr and miss brown they were a lovely couple and they wanted to go to the west indies and and help minister and pray with people and and they were dedicated Christians, and we told them, come on, let's go. So they they went with us. They met us over there. And anyway, they f supplied us with food, and sometimes we just did our own cooking because they had a stove and everything. So one day, we just made a big casserole of macaroni and cheese. And we ate it for supper and with some other stuff. I think we had some chicken legs. And we, we had some left over, so we just put it back and, Next day, we got it out and looked at it. We warmed it up. There was enough for the second day. So, we had macaroni and cheese again with the rest of our, like a salad or something. Do you know that casserole lasted three days for four people right there in the West Indies? It was a miracle. I mean, it was delicious. God did it. They have a special soup they make over there. I can't remember what the name of it is, but... I was going to research it and find out what the name of it is. They're famous for this soup, and it's got bread fruit in it and all kinds of other stuff that you don't know if you want to eat it or not. So the Browns said, oh, good, we're having soup. So they made a big pot of this stuff, the couple that was taking care of us. You know, they're all black over there, but they all speak English wonderfully well. So anyway, they made this big pot of soup, and they... They said, this is so special. It is so delicious. So, to me, it was fine. I thought Buddy was going to gag. And the Browns just did all they could to get it done. And they got up and left, and they went to the restaurant, both of them. And they threw up. They told us later, it, it was awful. But, you know, I didn't get sick. Buddy didn't care for it, but he didn't get sick. But both the Browns got so sick. And another funny thing. One morning, and you know we're Pentecostal, and we do shout. We do say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, sometimes, and raise our hands, thank you, Lord. I thank him all the time. He is so wonderful. So anyway, I heard she was taking a shower. We all had to go one at a time. There was only one bathroom there. She was taking a shower, and I could just hear her a yipping and a hollering and a carrying on, and I thought, she's having a hallelujah time. So she came out after she got dressed, and I said, I heard you in there having a hallelujah time. She said, I was freezing to death. I couldn't stand that cold water. I was hollering, ooh, oh, ooh. It was not a hallelujah time. <laughs> she was freezing to death. It's hard to take a cold shower, but she got through it. <laughs> probably because she was a wealthy woman, probably the only one she ever had in her life. The hot water heater that did hot water was down that day. They fixed it, and we didn't have any more problem. But we had some good times in the West Indies. They took us to see the jail and where they execute people. And, there, and other people are not allowed to go there, but they said, look, you're special. You're a Christian. We're going to show it to you. So we said, okay. So we went, and we saw the prisoners, and... He said, you know, the guy that was showing us around, guns are not allowed here in the West Indies on St. Vincent. You cannot have a gun. I said, well, how do they kill each other? He said, swords, knives, strangle each other. He said, there's plenty of ways to kill somebody without a gun. <laughs> he said, you know how we execute them? I said, no, how? Electric chair? Oh, no. He said, we hang them. Hang them. He said, I can show you where we do it. And we took pictures. They had a scaffold, and they had a thing they that they could put a noose around their neck and take the bottom out of nothing. And I was reading on the Internet yesterday that they had their last hanging, I think, in 1996. That's in West Indies, in St. Vincent. And I had no idea that they hung people anywhere in the world, but they do, and that's in St. Vincent. And also they showed us, the sand's black and it's beautiful and 
I don't care for swimming, but we went and waited. But um, we uh, took us over to this one. The water, it was like a fountain, and the water was just coming up out of this rock about as high as, about like three or four foot. I could lean over, and it was just bubbling up. And he said, drink that. It's, it's very healthy. And you know what it was? Seltzer water. Seltzer water, just like you get in a bottle. And I said, seltzer water? He said, yes. And anybody that drinks this water will want to come back to St. Vincent. I haven't been back, but, you know, I'm 90. I probably won't go back now, but who knows? Maybe I'll visit after I go to heaven, if it's still there. But anyway, the seltzer water was there, and we all drank it. And he says, you know, people come and get it by the gallon and take it home with them because it's it's been going on for years. And I researched it afterward, and there are certain situations where seltzer water comes right out of the ground. They don't make it. God makes it. Well, that's it for today, but I just thought you might be interested in that. I found it very interesting traveling, and Buddy Baird, he took, he was a good gospel singer, and he had a lot of cassettes, and we took them with us and sold them, and it helped with the ministry. And as you, there was no restaurants or anything over there where we was at. The church was really big, and when we wasn't preaching at the big church, there was a lot of little outlaying churches uh, that we would go preach, he would go preach at. But you could hear Buddy Baird's music being played because everybody had tape players, cassette players, and you could hear Buddy Baird singing all over that island when you took a walk because that was about the extent of your excitement. Take a walk. And that's what we did. It's so much fun reminiscing with you all. And I hope you all enjoy it because I certainly do. So have a blessed day. Go the path that the Lord would be pleased with, and may you be blessed, and I'm blessed. Number three is wonderful to me, and he is so good. He came home a while ago, and I fixed his lunch. I fixed him some beanwood bacon soup from Walmart, and I got a ham this morning at Myers. I tell you what, it was a fully cooked, and you know what? I just like to fry it because you can eat it right away, spiral, and normally, like, $32 and I got it for $9 and something and it is delicious. I made him a ham sandwich and bean soup. Very healthy. He won't hardly stop to eat. I don't know what to do with that man. Y'all got me in like that, some of you. Or that's life. <laughs> so I fixed his lunch and he's back to work and I think it's getting close to nap time. You know when you get 90 you love your little nap. 30 minutes. That's it. So God bless you. Catch you another time. Bye-bye. I just hang it up. <laughs>